take a look at a resolver. Now it's a position sensor which measures the angular position of a rotating shaft. Okay. Now they've been around for years. Uh, you know NASA used them on the Apollo and the Gemini missions, and uh, they <clears throat> they've been around for years and years. It uh, even started back in the, in the forties. Now, the standard resolver has a primary winding on the rotor, here it is here, and then it has two uh, stationary windings that are 90 degrees apart, okay? And because the station windings are mechanically 90 degrees apart, the secondary signals are phase shifted by 90 degrees. So here we have a sine wave that starts at zero, and we have a cosine here that starts at 90, so these two are, are uh, 90 degrees apart. And as we rotate this, this rotor around, it's going to change the amplitude of these signals going into these coils here. And we can use that to determine the, uh, the position of the, of the rotor here. So, now, in RF modulation, um, we use uh, IQ, uh, and it's in phase and quadrature. And that refers to two uh, sine waves with the same frequency, 90 degrees out of phase, and that's what we have here. So, uh, the I signal is your um, in phase, and that's your cosine here. This is going to be in phase, and your uh, Q signal is your sine wave here. So uh, I'm going to call this Q and this I, and in this position here, let's say this is 45 degrees. We're over here. We have our our cosine and our sine wave here, and if we sum those together, we get uh, a phase shift of 45 degrees. Okay. So, now, you can do it mathematically here. You can take the sine of 90 degrees is 1, cosine of 90 is 0, and you take the tangent of 1, and that's going to be 45 degrees, okay? But on this phasor diagram, it's probably easier to see. So, you have your amplitude here of, of your I signal and your amplitude of the Q signal, and if those two amplitudes are the same, then your vector is going to be at 45 degrees, okay? And if your Q signal is 0, and you just have the I signal, then you're going to be at 0 degrees, and if your I signal is 0, and you just have your Q signal, you'll be at 90 degrees, okay? So, with this setup here, we can do about a 180 degree turn here. Now, on uh, uh, normal ones, they'll have two more coils back here, so we can go 360 degrees. Now, I made this one up, and uh, it just has two coils on there, and the rotor is... Uh, it doesn't have any slip rings on it or anything, so the wire, I don't know if you can see the wires on there, but they're, uh, so I can't turn it 360 degrees anyway. But uh, we're going to see if I can get, uh, figure out a, a 0 to 180 degrees for an angle. Now what I did to make this, I just, this is an old uh, motor that I had, and I cut the shaft off with the bearing, and I just used the bearing in the old housing, in the in bell, and uh, I'm using that to, uh, and then I mounted a coil on top of that, and then the two coils and this little plastic ring on here. So I just made it up a little simple resolver up just to just to test the theory of it there. So um, we're going to take this and, and put it on the oscilloscope and uh, and see what it, see what it looks like. All right, here we are at the oscilloscope, and I have it at, at zero degrees, and. We're going to rotate this up, 40, 45, if I can get it right, 90, and uh, 180 degrees. I don't have slip rings in here, so I can't keep going around in circles, but uh, you can see that it's working. I have um, 5 kilohertz uh, going into the uh, coil on the rotor, and uh, I have uh, the scope is in X, Y, Y mode, so it just... Uh, plotting the, the voltages from the two coils, but uh, yep, there we go. I might be able to get it to go. Yeah, I can get it to go further. So that's it. That's, uh, that's a resolver, and it's at 45 degrees right now. So um, yeah, very good. Um, thank you.